if you are experiencing a blurry stream, drop frames, getting encoder overloaded messages, that can be a number of things, unfortunately. That's why you'll find so many videos, so many discussions, so many debates about what the right numbers are, what the right configurations are. And the, the short answer is, unfortunately, there isn't a magic number. It is unique to your situation and your viewers' situations, and I'll explain that in a bit. But I will give you a few places you can start looking. So we're, for this example, I'm using OBS Studio. I recommend OBS Studio. I love it. So let's say you're having a blurry stream it just looks especially when there's fast movement so what you want to do you want to go to file settings and there's two areas we're concerned with the first one will be output now on your output settings you're going to want to switch this to advanced that usually defaults to simple but you're not going to see any of this stuff that i'm showing you right now until you change that to advanced after you switch that if you're streaming from the same pc that you game on which nine times out of ten that's what we're doing you're generally not going to, going to want to use just plain x264 which i can't show you those options because i'm actually recording right now you're going to want to switch those to nvidia nv inc assuming you're using an nvidia card because that's going to utilize the dedicated hardware encoding chip on your GPU. And that means you don't have the CPU resources being used up in coding and getting overloaded, you know, during, during uh, heavy taxing work while you're gaming. So you want that on to that chip because it's going to add very little overhead to your GPU because again, it's not necessarily using your raw GPU resources like a video game does. It's actually taking advantage of that encoder hardware chip. Next option, enforce streaming service encoder settings. I don't have that enabled. I can't go into detail on all of this stuff, unfortunately because it, this video would just go on forever and i try to keep them short if any of you want some more explanation or different videos on different things to drill down into just let me know rescale output in most cases you're not going to want to rescale your output here you want to you want to change that somewhere else rate control should always be cbr you want that to be constant there there are no exceptions to that now let's talk about bit rate bit rate is the big one so bit rate generally speaking the larger your bit rate the better quality you can cram into that so the larger your bit rate to pixel ratio the sharper the quality is going to be so twitch's documented recommended settings that you can find right now as of this video as for a while has been 6000 bit rate is a soft cap so 6,000 bit rate at 1080p. Now just know that if you're doing 1080p 60 frames at 6,000 bit rate, that's still not a great ratio for that many pixels. That is a lot of pixels and a lot of frames to cram into that bit rate. So at 1080p 60, 6,000, whenever you get fast movement and a lot of frames going on, you're gonna get distortion. You're gonna get some pixelation. You'll, there's some big partners you can watch on Twitch that they stream at 6,000 bit rate, 1080p 60. And whenever there's fast movement, even their streams distort. Now most viewers well i wouldn't say most but a lot of viewers are viewing a mobile or a tablet it's not really that noticeable but whenever you start getting it monitor size full screen or even a television from a set top box or something it's really going to look terrible at the point in most cases whenever you get fast movement so one thing you want to ask what kind of content are you doing if you're just talking, if you're doing, you know, art streams, if you're doing slow turn-based games, something like that, 1080p 60 at 6,000 is going to look great. It's going to be crisp. Now, if you're playing, you know, if you're playing Fortnite, any any other f games with fast movement, which is a lot of what gets streamed, that's gonna you're just going to have to deal with some distortion. So, w one way of dealing with that is to turn your bit rate up. So the soft cap for Twitch is 6,000. There is a hard cap of 8,000. So that means if I go in here and even set the bit rate to let's say 8,100, if you set it to 8,100, Twitch is gonna 
they're gonna smack those packets back you're gonna get tons of drop packets it's, it's gonna act crazy you probably won't even be able to go live you're gonna see obs is just gonna go nuts because that's their actual hard cap so you can set it i set mine right i change this all the time depending on what i'm doing there again there's not a magic number i set mine at about 7500 because whatever bit rate you do know that there's going to be some fluctuation so if the hard cap is 8000 you don't want to end up fluctuating over that and then have some weirdness with some drop frames or some other stuff happening there now there's another fact to consider here that people always bring up their streamers like well make sure you mention this so if you are not an affiliate or a partner you will not be transcoded transcoded means basically whenever they dumb down the stream quality on whenever somebody has a potato quality internet connection so if someone's using a, a mobile device you know with kind of a spotty internet connection if you're streaming at 7500 bit rate or whatever they're probably gonna need a black screen have all kinds of buffering issues and and whatnot so transcoding is when twitch processes the stream quality that you send it them and then they create multiple so you'll see you can change it to 720p 60 if i'm sending them 1080p or you'll see a 480p you know different different stream qualities that they can dumb down so if you are not an affiliate or partner you will not have that option so you're going to want to keep this conservative you may want to keep this around 3500 or so because no there's several things to consider so if you you run your speed test and you say hey i've got 100 meg upstream i'm fine i can do six i can do eight thousand fine that's great but you still have to remember there's another side to that your viewers and your viewers if they don't have that kind of connectivity that you do they're not going to be able to view your streams so it's constant balancing act so if you're not being transcoded you don't want to bump it up that high i mean you would rather have you know not as sharp of a stream but at least let it load so that they can talk to you so they can see your stream next if you are affiliate nowadays more often than not you are transcoded but that's going to depend on a number of factors while partners are always guaranteed transcoding affiliate is first come first serve and they are rolling it out and twitch has stated they they intend to make it more of a guaranteed thing in the future they're working on that now it's just not there yet what you can do every time you go live and it's really easy to do launch from another computer another browser something just open pull up your own stream and just look click the sprocket and make sure you can change the resolution to different video qualities and if you can do that if you see you know you're sending 1080p and you see an option to switch to 720 or 4 or whatever then you know you're transcoded and you're good most times at the time that i stream which is early mornings us there's plenty of transcodes available so i don't have an issue um the few occasions i have noticed that it's only let's say i'm streaming 1080p i check the sprocket and i only have the 1080p option i'll just end the stream really quick and then start it back and every time i've done that the next time it's grabbed a transcode so that is another option that may be worth doing if it's early at the beginning of the stream because there's going to be a lot of viewers that don't have great internet connections they're not going to be able to um, view your stream and they're just going to move on to the next stream and that's going to be really frustrating for them because you can view a stream and then boom you get hit with an ad well guess what the ads play perfectly every time why because twitch's ads are always transcoded we are not so you want to make sure that you take that into account whatever you do that being said whenever i'm doing 1080p or so i hang around 7500 Bit rate but even then that's not going to be crystal clear on 1080p 60 with fast movement so nowadays i've actually changed some other things and bumped that up that i'll show you in a little bit but just play with this number know that it also is highly dependent on your own bandwidth what you can handle you you really need um, a hard line a network connection rather than running wireless if at all possible because you've got that to take into consideration so just know that look at this number if this number's sitting at 2500 or 3500 and you have pixelation and stuff there's you need to see if you can bump this up first of all and if you're affiliate make sure you're transcoded keyframe interval these are twitch's recommended settings to 
um, max Q. If you're getting, I would always start at max Q and try to do max Q because that's going to give you the best quality encoding settings for NVIDIA. Now that does add a little additional overhead to your graphics card. So if you have particular games that are hitting it harder and you're starting to see encoder overloaded messages down here one of the things you can try that really doesn't make that big of a difference in quality but does help quite a bit in performance is to switch this down to quality from max quality and i've had to do that on a few games in the past and barely noticeable difference but quite a bit big difference in uh, performance and that made the encoding overloaded messages go away so play with that and that is again depending on the resolution that you're gaming at i game at 1080p native so there's less of a load on my on my graphics card if you're gaming at 1440p keep that in consideration when you look at my specs and my twitch panels and if you can't get the performance well you may be gaming at a, you're probably gaming at a higher resolution than i am so your gpu already has a heavier load on it that's another example of why we don't have just a magic number that we can we can hand to people and that's why there's so much debate because there's so many different variables to take into consideration profile um you've heard different things on this i run high generally profile high which is process priorities so if i generally just leave it a high and you'll be fine on that i don't mess with look ahead that can do some quality improvements but that that's generally slower paced things i really most recommendations are leave that off again there's bound to be commenters or somebody's like well actually you know it's, it's one of those things that's always debated this is my spin this is a description of my settings and just things i'm explaining psycho visual tuning that's an nvidia proprietary feature that can help it does increase a little bit of load but it can help you know with some of the some of the visual quality you can play with that turn that on or off um that's just switch to gpus and you don't have to you can leave that to zero max b frames i generally set that to two that can that can help with quality as well okay the other section you're concerned with video so base canvas you'll you, that will always stay the same so generally people are going to have their base canvas set to 1080 leave it 1920 by 1080 what you're going to want to change or not will be your output scaled resolution so what i'm currently running at is 1600 by 900 so i don't have any problems hardware wise streaming at 1080p 60 but here lately i've been doing faster paced games and when i look at my vods afterward even at 7500 bit rate 1080p whenever there's fast movement they really start to look distorted and i'm really picky about that kind of thing for my own streams i mean other people aren't and it doesn't matter as much and your community probably and it grand scheme of things your community generally doesn't care that much you know as, as long as you're not dropping frames stuff like that but i dialed it back to 1600 by 900 so what i've done so and this is another thing that several people do it's not like i invented this so that's technically 900p and you'll have to type that in because it's not an option a default option in that box so 1600 by 900 gives you 900p leaves a bit rate the same so now you've got fewer pixels being utilized but you've got more bit rate so what you've done you've increased that ratio that bit rate to pixel ratio so now you can get better quality data better quality video it's sharper it's going to look sharper being sent to twitch now in most cases a lot of people are going to hang around 720p keep in mind that a large number of people are going to be viewing on smartphones tablet you know mobile devices roughly half your audience maybe and, then, and even the ones that are using web browsers they're not running at full screen in their web browser it's in a window in the browser so 720p in most cases i mean that's why that's the most popular one so i if you're running 720p and you're able you're able to make sure that you're encoded each time and you have the network capabilities to sustain you know 6000 or even 7500 you know or so bit rate at 720p now we're talking about a really sharp looking stream so those are some numbers you play with no again for encoder overloaded messages for single pc streaming this is another big one right here so if you're trying to do 1080p output 
in this spot and you constantly get these encoder overloaded messages all the time you're just going to have to turn that down you could try 900p because that 1600 by 900 is a good middle ground for quality between 1080p and 720p so if you're just getting that occasionally you may try 900p and just see how that works for you in most other cases you're just going to want to do 720p which is going to look fine Lanxos sharpened scaling that's going to be your best option for um you know it's going to take 36 samples that's going to be the sharpest rescale you're going to get of the options that are in this menu know that that is another thing that can impact your gpu with how heavy it encodes so you may have to change it to buy a cubic or something i would recommend always leaving this to the to lengthos you don't have to there there are other arguments not to do that and then playing with this instead first your resolution Lastly, and most importantly, you're going to have several options. Typically, we're either going to go with 60 FPS or 30 FPS. Another thing, if you are getting encoder overloaded messages, it feels like no matter what you do, uh, you maybe have an older GPU, you may just need to do 30 FPS because 30 FPS, <laughs> that's literally going to cut the load nearly in half. I mean, the, the math's not exactly like that, but it's going to take a significant load off your, your encoding overhead because it's literally having to do half the frames. So you may want to do 30 frames. And let me tell you, if you do 30 frames at 900p and a, a, a decent bit rate that Twitch will accept, that is going to look crisp. That's going to be a very crisp looking stream. There are some arguments for that. If you're, you know, if you're playing a game on a console a game that for whatever reason is 30 frames anyway, it may be in your best interest to go ahead and do that because it's going to, it's it, the gameplay is going to look the same for the most part either way, and you can have a much more clear looking stream so that's something you want to play with generally most of us i mean in the world we prefer 60 frames it just looks smoother it doesn't you know there's just something about it you know we won't get into the debate of well the human eye can only see this or whatever we're not going to get into that generally people want to do 60 frames this is a big one you're going to want to play with and see how much you can handle and you're going to want to always balance that with your output bit rate right here so play with that number see what you can handle see what your viewers can handle there's so much so much more to look at there's so much more that i could just go on this video is already you know nearly 20 minutes so i'm going to end it here if there's anything you'd like to see in more detail anything you want us to drill down to please let me know you can always hit me up on my twitch when i'm live playing whatever game i love talking about streaming just let me know we can just pop in the chat start asking questions like hey can you can you you know clarify this or whatever uh, we have a discord i'll try to include the discord and the twitch links in the description of this video i hope somebody found this sample uh, this this little video helpful